Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Uh, the video is done January of 2018. Code is 2017 to 2020. Um, try to talk as loud as I can here. I'm outside of a mechanic shop, but I wanted to show you uh, something that we wired up. It's just a detached trailer here. Go ahead and get a look. It's off the back of a semi that they got a long time ago. They're just putting all their equipment in here. Um, they simply do not have right now the space to drop a sub panel to 200 foot to the end of the um, shop. So they wanted to run it on a generator. They simply just want to run these three pieces of equipment one at a time. This is running about six amps. This is 12. This starts out at about 10 and goes up to 16. This is a big, huge bandsaw, just a sander, and then a drill press. Um, and then we put in uh, LED lighting. Pretty interesting. These guys are a T8 LED 15 watt tube. By the time I do the ballast in two tubes times three fixtures at 24 foot of LED light, I literally have only 101 watts or a three quarter amps to draw, which is equivalent to a 75 watt light bulb incandescent. Goes to show you how great LED can be. Um, so they asked us just to put some conduit in. Uh, we simply piped over to here, put in a separate GFCI. This is gonna be, just call it circuit blue, if you will. This over here will be red and we piped over to here and that could be a separate circuit and then black to here uh, simply put all this comes through to here combined it have a switch right here for our lighting just in case any rain tries to hit in here i know i don't have it completely weatherproofed here but they're not going to use this unless it's a good sunny day out he said um right here is how i joined everything so later on, if we want to break this off, we can take off this four port polaris connector and we can take off blue, red, and black and divide that up and add a couple more cords in and have separate circuits. They don't need that right now. The neutral can be added later to a three port if needed and then the ground. I like these ports right here because I can test power as I'm working uh, at the end of it. This one's gonna be basically per article 25064. Um, our load is 20 amps, so you probably really could get away with an 8 gauge, which is minimum to code for a grounding electrode conductor to, um, we usually call it a secondary um, grounding electrode conductor, but this is not going to be considered a secondary, it's going to be our primary because we don't have um, a UFER here, which is called um, inside of a cement footer, we don't have really a ground ring, which we probably could do. And we don't have cold water, um, we don't have anything. Even a gas pipe per article 250, I think it's 104C. But anyways, right in here, this we sanded this down, put a lug, bonded that through. It's the same. We made it a little bit longer in case they move this a little further out. This goes through, gives us our ground. Then we brought an EGC grounded conductor all the way through here. And then we brought down a number 10 to put a stab on our generator right here. This generator is only 1500 watts, or what they would say on the back of it, it'll state what it is. It's only eight amps on that DC side. So um, we were able to simply run right here, this drill press at six amps with no issue. To here, we had an issue. Definitely we're not able to do that. This popped our generator, it was running 12 and a half amps. And then this guy starts at 10 and goes up to 16 for the bandsaw. So this one would have an issue popping it as well. So I'll just do a simple test right here with the drill press to show you what I was doing. Um, so we established our ground for lightning protection plus also the bleed off for the neutral. Um, I wanted to simply show you one quick thing here as we fire this up. It's already been warmed up so I don't need to choke it. I'll try to talk as loud as I can. Okay, so right now the lights are on and I have a simple wattage meter. I'll show you how these lights are working. We'll unplug this, plug this in plug in here simply would tell me my watts 102 watts three LED lights or 80 watts or 
three quarters of an amp basically. Right now, from here to our neutral, our meter, a lot of you guys don't think I own any meters. I only use my meters when it makes sense and need to. That's 124 volts. Okay, let's turn off the switch. And I have almost 125 volts. So not much of a voltage drop with lighting. Okay, then let's check out our ground. Interesting, I'm getting a back feed of 43 volts. The reason why I drove a 10 foot ground rod and a bonded, if you will, right there on our generator at the bottom. All generators are gonna have a lug. Now, if I kick on the drill press, six amps, let's go to here. Running six amps, the ground came off. Let's try that again. So we're running six amps. Let's look at our bolt drop on our neutral, 122 volts. I'm only running about 50 foot through that conduit around. So we dropped, lost two, two and a half volts on that, which is probably at a 3%. But look what happens to our ground when we do that. We've increased it two volts. Okay, so let's turn that off. I'm not sure how long I can run this. I don't want to hurt my generator. So let's see. Yeah, 12. I'm gonna pop that generator. I wanted to see what our volt drop would be on 12. So maybe I can do this for a quick second. Let's see if we can hold that. Hundred and thirteen volts. I lost eleven to twelve volts, which is going to increase on the ground as well. Hold that. Right there. Oh, I lost. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. Okay. 